Hello and welcome to another episode of the Panty Personals. And with spring in the air and in my step, I'm delighted to say that my guest today is a gorgeous man who is a member of a very elite tribe of men about whom I can say I literally look up to. It's the six foot seven <laughs> R&B Afro-Irish artist Zona. Born in Lagos, but raised here in Ireland since he was a kid. Zona calls Mullingar home, but has now made London his address. And if you hung out with him at school, you may know him better as Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> he even used to perform in the early days as Jordan, or J-R-D-N, as the kids would have it. And we'll more about that later. <laughs> uh, his shift to London from Dublin before the C word locked us all in proved creative. And his EP, In My Head, came out late last year with songs that riff on his love affairs with music from the 80s, disco, pop, electronica and jazz. Jordan, if I call you that. Yes. Um, welcome and thank you for coming over thank from London. Thank you so much. That is such us. a nice intro. Oh, for, thank that you. is a very nice intro. Thank you so much. And thank you especially um, for coming over um, because it takes finally some of the pressure off me to be the hot one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I should point out that you have a penis with you today. Yeah, I, I do have a penis on me. You bought a, 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 a gay farmer. Uh, um, <laughs> Colin Conlon, um, who's well known in the gay community as being our, our foremost um, you know, homosexual farmer. Yeah. And the yes, yeah, 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 yeah um, absolutely. But he's also a, a beautiful musician and he's yeah. going to be um, playing piano Completely for you there. So if you hear noises rustling in the background or butting in, that's yeah. Colin. <laughs> we should also point out that his artist name is Puka as well. And he will be releasing stuff very soon. So look out for him. That's Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puka at yeah. P-O-O. K A H P U Fada C A. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to me first, um, Jordan, about the name. So, your actual birth name is. My actual birth name is Echazona. Uh, okay. That was the uh, well, if I was to say it in my accent, is Echazona, and um, that was given to me by like both my parents, and that was my name for the first ten years of my life. And it still is. I just shifted it to my middle name. Does it have a meaning? Does it mean something? It means don't forget. Okay. So the full name is like Chukwa Chazana, which is don't forget God. Everyone always gets given a sanctimonious name. <laughs> yeah. And it's always like, and it's, it's very beautiful and I really love it now. I don't say it as often, but I should. But yeah, that's my first name. And, and I, that's where Zona comes from? That's, a, that's where Zona comes from. Okay. Yeah, that, I just picked the cool sounding yeah, bit at the yeah. time. Yeah, and a couple of people were like, if I told people my name, they'd be like, you should just make that your name now. You should make it your name. But yeah, I, I did change it when I... Yes, because that's kind of cute. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so when you were a kid living in Ireland, yeah. that name was probably a burden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. I, I mean... I think I came in and I was completely overwhelmed. Everyone was talking different and everyone looked different. And I was like, okay, what can I do to be just like everybody else? And I remember so clearly walking into the principal's office to enroll into a school in Kerry and uh, the monastery in Killarney. And I like held my mom's hand and I was like, I want to make my middle name my first name. And she was like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I do. And I don't know why, it was just this. Ins- and your middle name was Jordan. My middle is name Jordan. is Jordan. Yeah, yeah, like literally is Jordan. And I, I looked at her and I was just like, I just want my name to be Jordan. Like, you know, I just, it was like a self-defense thing. And so she sat me in the office and she was like, this is Jordan. And then kind of like a couple of letters later to the government and then my name got switched around. So you legally had your name Swapped so yeah, that yeah, Jordan yeah. became your first yeah, name. Yeah, my than first attention seeking grab was like <laughs> messaging the government to be like, change my name. <laughs> yeah, but actually, it was the opposite of attention seeking. Yeah, you yeah, were doing really it to was. try and not draw yeah, attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. Diva moment, if yeah. you would have. But yeah, I sent a couple of letters and I think it went over like the span of six months. And it's so wild that my mom just let it happen. She was. She, I, I'm sure she understood. She why did. She you definitely were, did. Yeah. She definitely did. Yeah, it, I mean, I think of myself as a parent now. Like what if I if I do uh, I like own kids or have kids? <laughs> <laughs> <Own> kids. <laughs> you are you know the, the, those right wing American you know, evangelicals yeah. worst nightmare. Yeah. You know, g- gays going you around buying kids. kids. This is the future that the left want. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think of it, and she was just so in tune with me, and she just knew that like I was very anxious going in. And yep. as I say all the time, when you're ten, all you want to do is fit in. Now everyone wants to stand out and be an individual, but when you're ten, like you come into a school where everyone's known each other since play school, families grew up together, they've all holidayed together, and you're just kind of like... 
and it's in Kerry and you're the tall black yeah, kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the, probably the first. Yeah. Um, and all I just wanted to do was to fit in. Mm. And so I changed my name. Uh, and so now on your passport, what name is first? Uh, on my passport, Jordan's first and then at Chizona's um, second okay. and then on a Vogue. Um, and so yeah. in your daily life, your mates, what, do they call you? They, just call, <laughs> they call me Jordan. Jordan. Uh, yeah, they call me. Yeah, everyone just calls me Jordan. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm dating a Jordan as well, okay. uh, who's also six foot six or five. And when I met his parents, um, they were like, okay, we can't do this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What, is your, what is your name? And he was like, call him Jordan. And they were like, it's really confusing. So they call me, like, they call me Zona sometimes as well. And it's like really cute, I guess. It's endearing that that name is still used. Uh, well, you know, my boy name. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> my government name. the same name. as my dad's. <laughs> really? You know, and so, and that's very common in yeah, 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 So, yeah. you know, what I wrote my mother she'd shout Rory yeah, and, and there was just something about the tone in her voice that, that you, you could usually who. work out which one yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. and if she had to be very clear you know she'd say you know, Rory B yeah yeah, yeah. and you know I have my Rory B down for things but, you know, you know, because yeah. my, my middle name is Brendan oh Rory Brendan yeah, what, so, what county so are you Rory from? B it, it separated me from my yeah. dad like oh, where, where I'm from Mayo Mayo okay cool cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. but let's go back here a second so um how did you end up in Kerry at 10 years old? So, um, God. Um, you can just give me the positive yeah, version. Yeah, the plot. <laughs> My mom, single mom, just lost our dad. And she was just kind of like, I don't know what to do next. Um, mm. And she was pregnant for uh, with another child. Yeah. And, like, it's such a haze to me. I don't know how she was able to do it. I, like, think back and I... She basically walked on coal to get us a great life. I remember her sitting down and she pointed at a place in the map and I was like, that's not London. Uh, because that was the only place I kind of knew in Europe. Yeah. And she was like, we're going to go there. And like she did everything to get us like a visa. And this was like 2002. And she had friends, actually. She had friends that lived in Dublin. Okay. And I think when we first moved, we moved as immigrants. And then you get put into a system. And yeah. then I think we got moved down to Kerry because there were okay. like these living facilities there. Yeah. It was in direct provision, was it? Yeah, yeah, direct provision. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I read about it now and I'm I'm like, this is a nightmare. When you're growing up through it, your brain just, you're like, this is life. This yeah. is what life is. And you make the best out of what life has given you. And like, we made friends there. I still know people from mm. it and whatever. But we got moved down to Kerry, got naturalization. How long did that take? So about three years. Yeah. And... Then when we got naturalized in 2005 or, or six, we moved to Mullingar just so we could be yeah. somewhere close to central. But she still didn't want to do a big city. Yeah, but but now see, I, I now kind of understand the Mullingar thing. Yeah. The first when I first started meeting, you know, Irish Nigerians, yeah. and lots of them were from Mullingar. I was like, yeah. why? Mullingar? Yeah. But now I understand that Mullingar has quite a sort of vibrant yeah, 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 or you yeah. know it really established does. Nigerian it really community it there. Does. It really so I assume does. that played a part. In yeah, the it, yeah, it, does. it made it very easy. Like there, there was a burgeoning like yep. sense of community, especially formed around the church and yep. stuff like that. So that made it quite easy for her. And like, honest to God, I don't know. I still don't know how she does it, like how she did it. Me and my sister talk about it all the time. Like she had three kids and she did it all on her own Yeah, and put us all through school and worked and picked us up every day. And yeah. I, I'm always like, this is hard. I have to get up at nine in the morning <laughs> and she would work a 12 hour shift and do all those things. Yeah. Well, now you mentioned there about in Mullingar and the church community and everything. Yeah. Now, far be it for me to stereotype the Nigerian community, but <laughs> in my I'll do experience, it for you, don't worry. <laughs> um, um, well, first of all, the Nigerian community is quite church based mm -hmm. and choir singing yeah. and, and all yeah. of that. And secondly, Nigerian parents, certainly the stereotypical view, and I have found it to be quite true, is that Nigerian parents are very much um, want their kids to have university yeah. education, yeah, yeah, become yeah. doctors, lawyers, to join yeah. the uh, you know professional uh, uh, yeah, uh, classes sure. and all of that. So you're then handing your mother yeah. a double whammy. First, you're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be no doctor. I want to <laughs> be a singer. <laughs> and secondly, um, you know, yeah. maybe you're happy to sing in choir, yeah, but yeah. you're about to break as many, you know, quite a few yeah. of the um, of strictures. The, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, what I see it now as is for me to appreciate all of that, I have to see it as culture and not as like religion anymore when i see it yeah. as religion i'm like 
When You're I see this cult, with that Irish Catholic, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And I would love to know what it was like for like you or what it is like for you. But like I, I had to make the switch in the last two years to think of it as um, culture. And then yeah. I see the beauty in it because... For the last two years, I've just been like, if religion would just leave me alone, I'd be <laughs> yeah. fine. Just leave me alone. Like, have it be over there and just leave me alone. But a lot of it, like, it's how I learned to sing. It's how I learned to appreciate yeah. music. It's how I learned to laugh. It's where all my jokes come from. So when I see, oh, your African parent is doing this and I find it funny and joy rises up in me, it's like, because it was my culture. Yeah. Um, especially when you're out of Nigeria and you're somewhere else here, you have to build your own culture. And it was how I knew it. So yeah, yeah going in <laughs> to the choir, first of all, it was like, I originally put down medicine in my CAO. <laughs> you did, <laughs> you did, good Nigerian did, boy. Did, did, did the UCD <laughs> thing, dropped out, like came back, repeated. And I was like, I, I remember, and she's always like so understanding. She, I think like she never says it, but me and my sister always have the saying for her where she loves her kids more than she ever will love God, but she loves her kids so much that it makes me so emotional to look at someone who knows truly what love is. Yeah, Like it can be so hard for her, but she's like, I gave birth to these kids and I brought them in here. And sometimes I'm like, it's so, why, why don't you understand what I'm saying to you? But beyond everything she still just loves us more than anything well it's funny because um you're you're speaking my language here yeah because you know at my age you know people often talk to me about you know coming out for young people and advice and all that kind of stuff and one of the things i always say is everybody imagines the worst you know mm. before they come out and all of that yeah but the truth is that in the very very vast majority of cases most parents love their kids yeah more then they, yeah, you know, sure. love for all sure. the other bullshit. Yeah, I like, and I have to, I have to think of it from her perspective and her identity, like religion and all that literally was the fuel that made her just yeah. believe that life would be better. So I always have to think of like, what am I taking away from her if I ask her to completely break her morals or whatever morals that she has yeah. seen as morals to then see things my way. And and was she on board straight away? Because, for example, my yeah. own mother, who's deeply traditional, normal mm -hmm. Irish Catholic of her age and generation, you know, I never doubted for a split second that she loved me and wanted the best of me. But it definitely took her so, yeah. some time, a few years, to become totally okay with it because of the yeah. way it conflicted with her religion and what she'd always been taught. Yeah, yeah. She did eventually, and it's all fine and whatever. That's great. Yeah, how you, really? <laughs> was your that, mother, that how was your the, mother? I, I, like, it's still a process, right? We're still going through it. Yeah. I think, um, and I'll ask you about this next, there's a lot of like anger in me when I think of stuff like that because she's still going through the process, right? I yeah. knew I was gay when I was 10. I Like upon arriving in Kerry, I saw a boy and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what the word was, but yeah. I just knew what I was. And I, I've been like that. So for 15 years, I didn't tell her anything until I was 25. Mm -hmm. And I sent her a text message. And um, she was just kind of like, God, she's talked about my queerness more to my sister than she has to me. So yeah. she said to me, it was like her husband dying all over again. And I was just kind of like, okay, I'll give her time. And as life gets longer and whatever we start to get like further apart because there are parts of my life that i know she doesn't want to know about yeah and i made the effort i think in 2020 2021 to be like hey i know we don't talk about this very often but like i'm seeing someone and like i love this person more than anything and i like i'm so proud and i just met their parents today and i felt so ashamed that they know so much about me and it's not vice versa yeah like i think it just overloaded her and she didn't speak to me for a couple of months and anytime I talk about my queerness or try to bring it up, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So like there's a certain anger that comes with that and a certain level of understanding where I have to be like, okay, it's a process. You know what? We'll reach somewhere. And like even at Christmas, me and my sister went for a walk and I'm like, you know what? I'm not even interested in the future apology that she's going to give me at the end of her life when she's like, uh, I'm really sorry we wasted so much time. And my sister was like, what if that apology never comes? You just have to carry on and like literally go get love from me and your brother who will give it to you willingly will will be your family and will be accepting of your extended family be it your boyfriend or whatever but you can't drag this out of her like she will either reach there and that's where i am with it i, I guess i'm just yeah. learning but like well you know what was the things, process for you um well with with my mother my dad was Totally cool from the first second. That's always a weird one. Like, yeah, that, like country dads yeah. will just show up and they'll be like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. I thought, you know, but 
And that was the way it was. Um, and my mother, she had real trouble squaring the two things, yeah. you know, her religion yeah. and the fact that she had this gay son. And what first started on, um, I think, sort of her, the process yeah. of her you know, eventually being able to square those two things was her own brother was kind of her best friend in a way too. And, um, and he was a Catholic priest in England mm. all of his life. And your Catholic priests in England have a slightly different attitude. Yeah, they yeah, never yeah. walked around thinking they They're own the, the cool place, you know. <laughs> um, and he based, and of course he's there, you know, ministering for the last fifty years among the heathens with their yeah, divorce yeah, yeah, and yeah. abortion and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and so he basically told her to get over it. Really? Yeah. And yeah. so I think that sort of I think I think if she had a, yeah. But but and, I will say one thing. You mentioned anger. I also felt anger about it for a while. But one of the things I realized later that. My anger was directed at you know, religion, or at least the uh, you know the higher authorities yeah. in that religion, because it wasn't my homosexuality or my mother that had created this problem. It was yeah you know the bloody teachings of the church yeah. that had created this problem for yeah. us. Which is why I'm like, if it if it would just leave me alone, as in me, yeah. my family, the sensibilities and the moralities that's built around it. If it just left me alone and practice itself over there, I'd be fine. This is why I have to see it as culture and not as religion yeah. for me to appreciate anything in it. And there's lots of great things in it. Yeah, there's- In the culture, like I, yeah. I, you know, I grew up totally in Catholic environment and all yeah. that. And there's lots of great things about it, sense yeah. of community and, and you get to mark your life stages with yeah, communions yeah, yeah, yeah. and confirmations exactly. and all exactly. of that stuff. Exactly, exactly. It's just a nice, and, yeah. You know. And you go around Europe and you see what it's built and like, yeah. it's, it's, I, you can't help but be in awe that something yeah. inspired people to do this. Um, so you have to see it as culture, as like as a queer person, maybe to appreciate it because it doesn't make space for you. It doesn't. And it, it not, not only does it not make space for you, or, you know, if we're talking about say, well, yeah. the Catholic church for sure, yeah. and I'm not sure which <laughs> no, church same, same. Yeah. So it, it's not even that it doesn't make space for you. It actively <laughs> totally. pushes you out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, You know, it's the opposite. It's, it, you know, it's not passive. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's active. They're not it's quiet about it. Pushing it's actively you erasing you. Um, but, you know, I see... You know, certainly in a small town, Ireland, mm. you know, the church is the backbone of lots of things, yeah. even still. 100%. And, you know, there's lots of great things about it. And I know great priests and great nuns and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not that I hate, I just hate those parts of yeah. it. Um, 100%, I agree. Yeah. 100%. Well, agree. I also like that nowadays so many Irish people are the great phrase, you know, a la carte Catholics, which is which sometimes <laughs> is used dismissively. But I've I think never it's heard that before. Yeah, everyone should be like, it means you take the pieces yeah, take, that work for you. 100%, and you say, and, 100%. And my mother and her sort of friends are not that nowadays, what they do is they go to the confession and the mass and the bits that they like and get yeah, stuff get out of them. Yeah. But they absolutely pay no heed to the church's teaching on Absolutely. sexuality and all that, because who is least qualified yeah, you, to have an opinion on those things in the whole goddamn world? Um, honestly. But, but people choose to be sad of it. So um, I have high hopes uh, for you and your mother. Yeah, um, so same. I, yeah. I think, because I know ultimately she is a great person and the pretense of me not having yeah. a life outside the child that she raised cannot continue. At some stage, something will have to happen because it'll just get ridiculous, I guess. Well, that's very true because the other thing about coming out from us is, you know, you have to come out to your parents. Yeah. Because if you don't, you are actively turning your parents into acquaintances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's that was why I came you're out. You're hiding so much from that them. Was, that was why I came out. I was At some stage, I, I thought all she knew about me was my name. Like, to her, I've never had heartbreak. To her, I've never felt love. Those things don't exist to her. They're just yeah. blocked off bits of my character. And... Ultimately, I didn't bring myself here. She brought me here. So like, I just shudder at the fact of thinking that a child wouldn't be able to open up that part to me. Like if and when I do have a child, it would break my heart that I wouldn't be able to know that like they were in a three-year relationship and they were so heartbroken and they just didn't know what to do and they couldn't turn to their parents. Yeah. And that's like, I've been in three relationships. I've had heartbreak. I've, I've had all these things that I had to just teach myself. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I see my sister and like, I love my sister with everything and we both taught each other stuff. And I, I sit there at Christmas at the dinner table and it's, um, it's my mom talking to her my sister's boyfriend and like they're such good friends and i'm like it doesn't affect me it doesn't affect me it doesn't affect me i go to the bathroom and i'm calling my boyfriend being like happy christmas this that the other and i'm like i can't live like this yeah yeah i, I can't do it and i well, shouldn't yeah, the other thing to say is nearly all of that stuff that your mother is doing with actually is rooted in concern for yeah, you yeah i know you i know, know. They, 
you know, she, she thinks you're going to be unhappy or the world is going to be harder for you. And that is at the root of all of these things. It is. Ultimately, I like, I know. I Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, it is true. And it, it like, you can forget that and can mm. be so wrapped up in your own righteous anger. But it is from concern and so ridiculous that it, the concern is what causes the fear yeah. that like this self-fulfilling prophecy that she was like, oh no, this is, the world's going to yeah. be difficult. I'm like... No, you are my world and you're being difficult. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah, right? That word down. Give me some paper. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some paper. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I do love her. I do. But every, clearly, clearly, yeah, she yeah, loves yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure over it'll, time. Yeah, yeah. it'll, it, yeah. there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> Colin, um, I, we should probably we're going to have a song yeah. now in a second but um how's 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 it being um an out screaming gay farmer um in in farmer's world ireland well you know me i enjoy the attention <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we're about to go into calving season so it's going to be all hands on deck but... <laughs> which is a chat of line for, for, for the ages <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you're going to do so, two songs. With, so yeah. the, let's have one of them. So, um, yeah. what, tell us about the first song. And um, every song on the EP is about um, is about one man. Uh, I, I can't believe that someone was able to inspire so many emotions from me. Is it the other Jordan? Uh, yeah, the other Jordan. I, I've never been able to focus and be so inspired to write about something. And I guess maybe growing up as well, you learn to articulate your feelings a lot better. But I, This Could Be Us was the first song I wrote on this EP. And it was about like, I had just had a breakup and I had moved to London. And then I was like, I'm not looking for anything. I don't want anything. Let's just like hook up or whatever. And then um, he's like, no, let's go for a walk. I went for a walk and I was like, oh God, there's so much healing that needs to happen and getting over stuff that needs to happen. But like, I can see what the relationship could be. I can see all the beauty. I could see everything that could happen if I could just took the leap. And just was like, yes. So This Could Be Us was about being in two minds, being like, I there's so much I have to fix. And I, I don't know if I should jump from this relationship into this relationship, yeah. but I can see it working so perfectly. I can see everything. And um, what do I do? Like, uh, and that's that's what it... So did you never have the slutty ring around during the period? <laughs> no, I did not. God damn it. What a wasted opportunity. It's still tough. <laughs> no, I, I never did. I, I moved on and I was like, no, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to do me. And as with every stage of my life, every time I say I don't want a relationship, that's when it comes around the corner. And they just get it, I guess. And it's easier. And like... We have a relationship where we talk about literally everything or I just force him to talk about stuff. I'm the emotional like artist and he's the corporate. And I'm like, you need to talk about your feelings. If you find that person attractive, <laughs> tell me that you find them attractive because I find it, I find that attractive. I like and so it's very mature and I could see that as well. I could see that I could tell him anything. And I'm happy that I did it. Like, it doesn't mean that it's not difficult, but like, I'm happy I did it. It's like work that I want to put in. But yeah, this could be us was about that. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Fear in my chest, blood in my eyes I don't know why, I don't know why I must confess, I want to fall Maybe if I do then this could be us Was it the things I left unchanged? Was it the hurt that still remains? I know these tears still come at night Cause I'm not the same, baby I'm not the same What if you got me Falling in a way I never know And maybe I'm crazy No, your love can cut me to the bone I see your worst I see your best, you're crystal clear, you're crystal clear I wish I could be just as brave Maybe if I do then this could be us Was it the things I left unchanged? Was it the hurt that still remains? I know these tears still come 
come at night Cause I'm not the same, baby I'm not the same What if you got me Falling in a way I never know no. And maybe I'm crazy I know your love can cut me to the bone Just take me there Take me to the unknown I'm not scared Cut me to the bone Take me there Take me to the unknown I'm not scared Cut me to the bone was it the things I left unchanged? Was it the heart that still remains? I know these tears still come at night Cause I'm not the same And what if you got me? And maybe I'm crazy There, take me to the unknown. I'm not scared. Cut me to the bone. Take me there. Take me to the unknown. I'm not scared. Cut me to the. Take me there. Just take me to the unknown. Beautiful, so beautiful, beautiful vocals, beautiful keys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, I want to talk to you about your music, but before I do, I know you, you've never been back to Nigeria. I never have been. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, busy, you know, Irish gay life? Or yeah. Yeah, it's like, I just, I don't know. I, I've never really felt the urge to go back. I, I didn't know what I would be going back to. Yeah. There wasn't a sense of identity. And that's just that just is a byproduct of growing up here. Yeah. I see home is here. All yeah. my memories, like my formative memories are here. I don't see a, a queer identity there. I don't like my mom is my most immediate family. Like I do have an extended family that's insane. Like but so you do have a, a family in Nigeria yeah, like, that you know uh, you yeah, know yeah, and yeah. so like my grandparents come from the age of polygamy. So I have like eight uh, grandmothers like seven, <laughs> seven steps and one actual grandmother and then oh my god all, nightmare yeah nightmare <laughs> <laughs> and not one present from any of them um and then like 36 uncles and aunties so like they're mm. everywhere um but like like i just never grew yeah. up with them and there's like home home is always like a really big thing i i made a point of going back to mongar when i got back when i flew in on friday and it's just it's just this thing where Home is wherever remembers me. Yeah. Like small towns will always remember me. Uh, like I'll walk past the Gale School and I'll be like, oh my God, I'll walk past like the chipper and I'll, I will instantly remember when I thought to myself, what will I be like when I'm older? Will I still remember this moment? Will I still be the same? Will all my friends, even walking up Camden Street, I'm, mm. I remember everything and it's just, it fills me up with so much and that's what home is to me i i like dublin is home to me it's 10 years of experiences mm. um mullingar is home to me i always make a point that mullingar is home to me and not the first place i moved to Kerry, because yeah. Kerry is beautiful and nice but all my memories all like happiness laughter all of that that's that's where home is and i never yeah. felt the need to go back not that i was sad in nigeria i just don't remember anything there i like that idea though that you the way you said it that home is the place that remembers you yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than the place that you Yeah, London, London is cool, but lo cities cities will never remember you and yeah. towns will never forget you. I walk around London and I'm like, this is amazing, but everything's always moving really fast. And yeah. There's nothing that like grabs me as much as like just everything that has ever happened to me in Dublin or Mongar. And yeah. yeah, and it just makes me so happy and it tears me apart sometimes. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know, but, but obviously... Dublin is has been changing, especially over yeah, the last Yeah, rapid years. changes. What is that? <laughs> yeah, no, I like it's <laughs> these hotels head spinning in that. <laughs> yeah. but, but but even like you know there was say when I was you know in my twenties there was in nineteen twenty you know, was it? Yeah, <laughs> it, it very much felt at that time there was like three you know black people in Dublin yeah. and everybody knew them. Whereas of course that has changed, but at the same time the gay scene 
again, is changing all that. But say 10 years ago, you know, you would really stood out. Yeah. Six foot seven, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, black boy yeah. you know, in the Dublin gay scene. You know, you would definitely be one of few. Yeah. Whereas in London, you're one of many. Yeah, yeah. It, um, yeah. Is, do you embrace that kind of... I'm just one of many kind of yeah. anonymity about it. Is that something that you thought, oh, I can actually sort of forget all that stuff now? Or I always, t- <laughs> you know, <or laughs> it, it, maybe, it, it's, know, it's so funny. I, I don't even know where to come with the question from because there's so many yeah. points to it. When I was growing up, there was only one other black gay. And I think it was, it was literally both of us. And um, we were friends in like, we lived together and all that. And I guess we got to construct our own identities for ourselves. Mm. Um, and I appreciated that. Although I, I, I just was very aware that I wasn't a lot of people's cup of tea back then. And you could see times change in like in real time. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, you're hot. And I'm <laughs> like, okay. Um, but yeah, it, it was very, very interesting. And then I was like, oh, I'll move to London and everything will, like they've seen me before. I get asked for less high fives in London, but people still like stare at me like I'm this oddity that has just entered. And some, I, Why? I, because your height and all of that or something? I think or? so, but I enjoy it. Like I used to hate it, but I enjoy it now. Like if I walk into a room, I know that I can get people's attention mm. uh, and I enjoy that. Uh, but I didn't think it would happen as much in in London. Uh, yep. But it still kind of does. Like here, if I go out, like I, could, I can't remember the last time I went out here. But there, there used to be a case where in a reoccurring situation, people would just be like, oh my God, hi, who are you? This, that, the other. And mm-hmm. it's all coming from a nice place, I guess. Like it, it always almost comes from a yeah. nice place but the attention still remains the same kind of thing i think it's the yeah. height thing it's it's yeah. a mixture of the height thing of just being like i think someone once said to me that like don't be so upset when people like speak to you i feel like when they see you they have to say something and i'm like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're like, like they just have to say something and especially like find it, it trying yeah yeah, yeah. If, if you if you're in a club or if you're in a social situation and you're less inhibited or whatever you will have to say something and it always happens i think so i i don't know yeah Let's well it embrace, is i embrace it now well, it's also make it work for me it's the one thing that that everybody says to very mm. tall people yeah you know whatever has yeah. the weather up there and all that so i know yeah do you play basketball do you want to high five yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I've learned to embrace it. I used to hate it a lot. I, I think I got to boiling point with it, and um, now I go back and forth. Now it's within my power to just not respond to people. You know, I, I guess I guess I was sort of trying to see it through my own experience. Yeah, of, that, of like coming from a small town, and especially at the time that I was coming out, in the eighties was really gray and mm-hmm. grim and heterosexual here. Yeah, uh, and then going to London and running around and suddenly feeling like there's thousands of other people I like know, me, and it's wild. I know, it's but magical. you didn't feel that as, as particularly as you know as a black gay person moving to London at a later time. No. I did. Yeah. I, I definitely did. I, I think from the mid part of my 20s to when I was like maybe 28, which is when I moved, I did this focus thing where I was like, I need to work on my body. I need to work on my like songwriting. I need to work on like my career. So I, I was quite like laid back in the whole like partying thing or whatever. And then I went to London <laughs> and there's just so much. There's an yeah. excess of everything. And I'm I'm happy that I, I moved when I was a bit older. I got there and I knew exactly what I wanted and what I didn't want and what was fun and what I was willing to explore and all yeah. of that. But yeah, I definitely moving to London, I was like, first I was like, fuck, why didn't I do this a lot earlier? But then also I, I like arriving in London with a sense of myself. Um, yes, it probably that, that helps, is the best to be gift. Honest, like, yeah. just I, I would never go to London to go find myself. I'd never go to a big city to find myself. Yeah. Go with an idea of what you're going for. But yeah, definitely, it was very eye opening. <laughs> <laughs> eye opening for me. Like, definitely for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. we, let, let's talk about the music. Yes. So the choir. Yeah, the choir. The, the usual uh, start there. Yeah. Um, then you have to tell your mammy you're, you don't want to be a, d- a doctor <laughs> yeah. and, and you do a degree in jazz, jazz yeah, yeah, yeah. at New Park. Yeah, she she yeah, she was like, well, if you're going to do music, you have to do like a very like rigorous like yeah. study thing of it. At least go learn something. Yeah. So I looked around and I like and New Park was just in their second year of like their jazz degree. And I went in. And I went to audition for it. I sang, <laughs> I sang Lady Gaga's like love game. <laughs> <laughs> and 
they must have been like, what the fuck? What is this? And I was like, I'm going to sing a jazzy version of Love Game. And I'm like, let's play a love game. <laughs> it was so, like, you ever have those moments in life where you're like, what was I, what was I doing? <laughs> like, what? Uh, so I did that in New Park. Um, I did three years there. And then I um, took a year off. And my mom was like, you really need to, like, you know, finish whatever it is that you started. So I then transitioned to BIM and did an advanced entry into BIM. BIM, uh, for people yeah, who may British not know, Institute, uh, yeah. Institute of Music is yeah, San Francisco, yeah. but it's basically like the the, the rock and roll fame yeah, academy. It's like, it's, yeah, it's um, the Brit school of, uh, yes, and, of and Dublin. It's interesting to, because I can't remember how many years ago it opened here in Dublin now, and um, Derek Kenny is very well as an old friend of yeah. mine. Um, and so it's amazing now to see all the BIM kids emerging. Yeah, yeah, it's a um, factory. And yeah, all of these, you know, new... <laughs> musicians who are yeah. suddenly, you know, emerging into sort of they're, they their are. careers. So many of them are now... Even before they graduates. finish. Before yeah. they finish, like, people are vaulting into careers. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice touch point. And they did very well to, like, promote me. And just, like, <laughs> I was very much the pick-me kid where I was the <laughs> yeah. Rachel Berry from Glee of BIM. I was like, I will sing if none of you want to. Actually, you want to say, I'll sing. Um, <laughs> but it was uh, it was good. I had fun. I had friends uh, who were doing amazing things, like the backing singer for Dua Lipa, like go, literally preparing to go on tour. Yeah. You have like Theodore Bur Byrne, who's like the musical director for James Vincent McMorrow. Like really, really talented, stupendously yeah. talented And we've people. had quite a few come through here. Yeah. 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 Um, but but um, so this all sounds very cool. But when you were a teenager in your bedroom, you were like glued to your Christina Aguilera <laughs> YouTube's and yeah. <laughs> so um, the Lady Gaga um, audition number makes a bit of sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. I Honestly, I don't sound like Christina, and I always like to point this out. People are always like, why is this tall black man talking about Christina? If I ever open my mouth to sing, I the way I approach my voice is like with her sensibility i'm just always like it's showmanship yeah. always do a lot just keep <laughs> it's not enough uh and i just think that she has the best voice on the planet christina literally taught me how to sing like i spent a whole summer of 2008 falling in love with the stripped album and bionic came out later and i i watched every single performance that she's ever done ever like even the ones that were just recorded on a phone and that's how my ocd worked i was like what's that run what's that what's that what's she doing here and that's how i learned how to sing um, if i was christina i'd be yeah. worried now <laughs> <laughs> i did i saw her in zico's once and she was behind a barricade and it's i was in such awe and i was just standing and looking at her and my friend came up to me and he was like um you're six foot seven she's five foot one this does not look good like she was where you were and i was right here just like staring at her and she had security over there and they were like jordan can you just do this at the back i know you're in awe and i know that like you're finally seeing her in person but yeah i all the love in the world for that woman, <laughs> for that little woman <laughs> um anyway and then you um after all that you eventually then moved to london mm. um you know, with a plan about, you know, accessing yeah. a music career or... I just, I think I thought to myself, great risk, great reward. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, I vaulted to London and I was just like, um, I'm just going to go do it. And I was very lucky, like London works like this where um, you say you do music and someone's like, oh, I know someone who does music. Yeah. You'll be at like a house party or a friend's place and they're like, oh, I know someone, I'll put you in contact with that. And that's so, that's so electric because seven times out of 10, it doesn't work. And then I, I got the like other three, three times out of 10. And there was this guy who also just moved, um, uh, Roberto, who just moved to London. And he was like, what kind of music do you like? I was like this. And we just kind of like formed the friendship. And he was like, do you want to write about your life? I'm like, yeah, I am going through shit right now. Let's write about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, um, that's, I, I moved without a concrete idea of what I was doing. But um, if you jump, like you'll grow wings along the way. You'll mm. you'll just you'll have to survive. Like you just have to survive. And I bet on myself as well. And you're never disappointed if you do. Like if you bet on yourself, like you will never be disappointed because you at least have tried. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I see it. And so the first Zona EP mm. was written and recorded during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, during period. the pandemic. Yeah. Dance around you in my head a lot. I read between the lines, looking for a sign, trying to make you mine, but I can't reach you, and I know I should let it go, but baby, you dance around you.
all of it was written and recorded during the pandemic period um yeah i don't know i i, I still can't believe it happened i would go in every day say something and he'd be like let's talk about it i'm like i'm afraid i'm anxious he's like let's talk about it why anxiety so it was just like therapy sessions that turned into mm. music and that was it I'm and very how lucky. would you describe yourself the, the music on the album I think that um, <laughs> I think it's very universal. I think I'm trying to replicate what people have felt in the past, are feeling, or will feel. I don't think that I am extremely like tapping into something new. There's special people like you who can make people find new things about themselves and speak at people. Like I remember listening to your "I Check Myself" speech, and I'm just kind of like. I've never thought that way before. I would never come in and say, look, I have come up with this new way of thinking or whatever. I think that I just want to be the soundtrack to people's lives. Mm. And that's what it is. I, I think of the music as a soundtrack to people's lives. It was stuff that was so heavy in my heart. The future song that we're going to do, Slow Dancing, was just me lying in bed after a party at like 7 a.m. and looking at um, looking at Jordan and I was like, you're the sun. You're like the sun. And I'm so glad that you came in and changed my life. And he's like, Jordan, calm down. It's only three months. And I'm like, yes. But you <laughs> oh my God, you're that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who's getting Jordan yeah. calm down. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're just, you're literally the sun. And I didn't think you'd be here in like the end of August. Like we're lying here on the floor. I did not think you'd be here. I, um, and I can't believe it's happening. And I'm, I just want to go do it again. I want to redo summer again and like make it happen. He's like, we'll have loads more. Like we'll have loads more. And I'm like, it's just been so perfect. So yeah, I think feelings like that, everyone's felt that way about somebody else. And that's kind of what I tried to do on the EP. I just tried to recapture everything that pe the normal human being goes through. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's hear it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Once again, accompanied by... The Farmer's Journal Centerfold. <laughs> oh, don't <Yes>. forget it. <laughs> I need a new angle for next year's prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The summer's over, but I just want to make it last and get to know you. Uh, the sun is fading. But I still feel it on my skin, I want to save it Cause I never thought we'd stick around Never thought you'd make my heart beat so loud Every time we hit the ground I feel the fantasy Slow dancing into the night Free falling, I'll be alright I've been waiting all of my life Got you spinning around in my mind The leaves are changing Wish I could do it all again Scared but I pretend Yeah, stay up till morning my favorite kind of sin Hope we never reach the end Cause I never thought we'd stick around I never thought you'd make my heart beat so loud And every time we hit the ground I feel the fantasy Slow dancing into the night Free falling, I'll be alright I've been waiting all of my life Got 
you spinning round in my mind Cause I'm free Cause I'm free Cause I'm free And I've been waiting all of my life All of my life, all of my life I've been waiting all of my life All of my life, all of my life I've been waiting all of my life Cause I'm free Cause I'm free Oh, slow dancing into the night Free falling, I'll be alright I've been waiting all of my life Got you spinning around in my mind The summer's over But I just want to make it last and get to know you Thank you, Colum. Thank you, Colum. <laughs> One of the things I read you saying that um, very much struck a note with me because um, it's something I'm always banging on about and you qualified it beautifully. You said um, that being gay makes you a better person if you let if it. You let it. Yeah. Um, I'm always banging on about that. Yeah. And it's why I get particularly annoyed when I meet gays who are racist or misogynist yeah, 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 or something yeah. um, because you would think we're that, afforded so much yes just, that yeah. you would well you would understand other people's oppression mm. uh, you know yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever yeah. Um, and uh, and I, so I constantly bang on about it being gay does make you a better person it does it does if, if you, you let it let, yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to let it if you, you have yeah. to yeah 100% I think if you were just only to learn like mirror other people's difficulties with your own it, it like it opens a world of like I just don't, I don't knowledge and and empathy, empathy. Yeah, yeah empathy so you should like be able to feel other people's yeah pain just as you would want other people to feel for you. Yes. Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's funny. Um, I think there was an idealistic younger period in my life where I thought, oh, it was true of all gays yeah. that they learned something from the yeah, experience yeah. and are therefore you know are better. And I have to say, I mean, I hate to be that granny, you know, who's <laughs> painting some sort of fake picture of the past. But I will say that when I came out in the late 80s and um, it was it was very difficult to find other queer people, or certainly it was here in Dublin yeah. at the time. Um, and there was no internet or any of that. Yeah. So like, and the gay scene, because it was illegal at the time, um, you know, it was very hidden. Yeah, And so... You know, imagine if you just dropped yourself in the middle of some city and said, go find gays. Yeah. Um, and, you know, 1980, whatever, in Dublin, Everyone's that was a really difficult yeah. thing to do, just to find another fucking yeah. queer person. Um, and so it was all like rumors about yeah, you know, where they like might hang sowing out. Sowing distrust and stuff. Go to some stuff, cafe, yeah. whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. And so eventually, when you did find them, Mm. Uh, a that was a process in itself you had to get Angela Bloody Lansbury on the case um, <laughs> and then when you did find them um, you know nowadays you can go to bingo in the George on Sunday and bring your mum and lots of people do and that is wonderful and great and all of that mm. uh, but now the distinction between the gay world and the muggle world um, <laughs> is is um, <laughs> Is very blurred, you know. Everybody knows where the George is. Yeah, Your yeah, grandmother yeah, yeah. knows where the George is. Um, <laughs> She'll probably you go know, without you. <laughs> yeah, there are gays on the television and all that <laughs> stuff. So it's not this hidden, separate world. But at the time, and it, it absolutely was. There was no gays on the television. Yeah. There was no Graham Norton, no Brendan Courtney. Nobody knew where the George was. Nobody yeah. ever heard of the George. It, it was an entirely separate world. And in order to get to the point where you were prepared to a put in the effort to find the other gays yeah. and then step over that threshold into this hidden, entirely hidden underground, you know, darkened world. Yeah. You really need to reach a point where you were at breaking point yeah. and where you were at the point where you thought, fuck all fuck of that. Fuck this, yeah. Just fuck all of that. And you almost were crossing a, a, an irreversible line because 
nowadays you can work in the bank and have a good job yeah. like your mother wanted and be a flaming yeah, gay. Yeah. <laughs> but in 1987 you couldn't yeah. you had to choose you yeah, know, the cheese, decent the job and all of that or being gay yeah. you couldn't have both at the time Jesus. and and all of the things your mother wanted for you were barred to you getting married meeting a nice nurse mm. settling down with a picket <laughs> fence and a chocolate labrador you know, you couldn't have any of that yeah. when you went across that threshold and went into this basement on you know off Baggett Street somewhere yeah. to find the other gays um you know amongst you know under a cloud of poppers and the Pointer Sisters um, <laughs> they were a self-selecting group yeah who tended to be quite radical. Yeah. And they yeah. were looking at the world in radical ways and, you know, experimenting with other yeah. ways of living because they necessarily had to be that kind of person to get to that yeah. point. And that's probably why, like, being gay made you a better person. Well, I think at that to, time, it felt yeah. part of the gay culture was yeah. to be radical yeah, and yeah. to to think about, yeah. you know, it, we didn't have the word intersectionality at yeah, the time, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, intersectional yeah. stuff... Whereas now that isn't necessarily part of what you yeah, need it's, to, it's to end up, <laughs> yeah. you know, at Bingo and the George. Do you know, <laughs> love Bingo and the George. I'm, that, that's just, I'm just, you know. I'm, We're you fan know, of Bingo and the George yeah, on this yeah, show. Yeah, really go to Bingo and the George <laughs> and bring your mother if you want to. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. I, and I 100% agree. I think ease of living brings a certain kind of like uh, forgetfulness of yeah. how we got here. Yeah. Um, I think it's that thing where you fought for a really easy life for your progeny and then mm. they don't know how hard it's been because everything's just been handed to them. Yeah. Um, they're not aware that they sit on the shoulders of like people who have yeah. done the work for them. And I always just try to remember that, that like I, I had to see it. I saw my mom bring me here. So I know it's, I have to remember that and like work as hard to, for the next generation also instilling them that it's not easy mm. and um you must always just be aware and be grateful yeah yeah but i agree <laughs> yes i mean well you know you're a poster uh, a poster gay for intersectionality <laughs> <laughs> i am i am um what's next for zona uh a lot of recording a lot of uh more live performances i feel like if people were only just to hear me even just sing i think a lot more would fall into place I, I did all this in the pandemic never start a music career in the, never restart a music career in the pandemic it teaches you a lot but like god you're like what am i doing what's next is doing a lot more live shows just getting people to hear it that's yeah. that's that's definitely top of my list and then m coming up with new material but i just want people to hear it and if only they were to hear it then it would all fall into place that's it um any plans for irish performances yeah like i'm hoping for festival like festivals are opening up again so yeah. like we're going to take them by storm but yeah you will see a lot of me in festivals to come well and we will look out for you yeah. um and Please we look do. out for Colm at yes. March next Wednesday yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, Colm thank you for coming thank you so much. um Jordan slash Zona thank yeah. you so much for thank being here thanks so for coming over for having me, me honestly pleasure and a delight yeah um for people listening please do check out the videos of those beautiful performances which you can find um online um and of course everything uh pantosocracy uh and panty personals related can be found on pantosocracy.ie including all of the links to all of the various um shows and all of the various performances mm -hmm. um, thank you and good day <laughs>